Well, I've recovered from food poisoning enough that my voice is quite normal again, and I'd like to cover some of the issues that I've been seeing with 3D Experience. Um, most or all of these have gone through the support, and I'll talk about some of the support that I've received as well. I think I want to say foremost that uh, the support on 3D Experience is very good. It's very responsive. People respond quickly. That You have an internal forum that, uh, you know, strictly to so people will uh, respond to you. It is not a technical service that is exported to some other country. It is, um, I, I think, in whatever country you live in, or at least uh, primarily in the United States. I've been supported mostly by people in the United States, and uh, it's quite refreshing compared to some of the other supports that I've had to do on other platforms. Uh, with that being said, let's jump into it. If I could sum this up into one uh, driving reason that I'm having issues, it is complexity. This is very complicated uh, and it is very complex to try to do simple things. Let me give you an example. I had a technical representative do a follow-up with me on uh, you know how things were going if I had any questions or issues and I asked the representative how do I delete a part? And it should be really really simple. He actually didn't know. The parts were um, kept in the 3D space, which I guess is sort of your, you know, Windows Explorer of 3D experience. And you can go to Common Space. Uh, so I've got this part called Delete This, right? So if we want to delete this, you'd naturally think about uh, something on the drop-down menu, but there's no uh, way to delete this. There's no option, right? And this was created in X Design. But even though this was made in XDesign, this open width does not have XDesign in it. And if I click more apps, it just says your selection has been updated down here. There's no actual way to open this from here in XDesign. And that is crazy to me. So it goes back to being complicated. I can't open up a part that I created in XDesign in XDesign from the Explorer window, right? There's a whole other way to do that. So remind me to get into that. So I asked the technical guy, how do you delete this? He had no idea. He had me post my question to a uh, internal forum that uh, a few technical people in SolidWorks, or SolidWorks, sorry, 3D Experience, um, would, uh, would it be able to answer my question. And I had an interesting conversation with one of them. So this is what I was... Uh, going through uh, when I asked my question, how to delete a file from 3D Space. Um, this person got back to me and said you cannot delete a file from Collaborative Space. You would have to open the object in the correct widget and delete from there. So for a physical product, product structure widget should allow you to delete. And uh, I opened up the product structure widget and I said uh, an additional question. Um, when clicking on product structure uh, with the intent to delete a part, in XDesign is picture, but I'm running in Linux and currently a local install MSI format is not compatible. Do you know if there's a way around this? So th this is another issue where this is a cloud-based software, but it in some cases requires local installs, which sort of, to me, denotes the benefits of working on the cloud. It takes away from the benefits, but we'll, we'll get into that later. Um, so it turns out she says that she wants to use a structure called Product Structure Editor, different widget, right? So there's so many widgets that even share the name Product Structure. <laughs> so I went and found the uh, Product Structure Editor and it wasn't there. Right? I, I searched for this Product Structure Editor, posted a picture that's not there, and she says, oh, I guess you don't have it. I'll have to check with others about this particular role license required and get back to you. So. They didn't know. I'm, I'm two layers deep in technical support and they still can't tell me how to delete a part, which should be simple, intuitive, and central to the function of a software that is supposed to not only act as a modeler, but also as a PLM software. So <laughs> about a week goes by and uh, the original technical person gets back to me and I'll open up 3D space here. and uh, says, 
All right, here's what you got to do. You want to search something called collaborative life cycle. So I pulled my little magnifying glass to search through these widgets. Collaborative life cycle. Now, I just click to open collaborative life cycle because that seems like the most logical thing for me to do. And it's actually, you can see, taking forever. So I'm going to let this thing sit and see what happens. All right, it's asking me to do a local install. I'm on Linux, can't run MSI files. So I have to go from this collaborative cycle to this collaborative cycle. If I had to guess, this would be a CATIA powered collaborative life cycle, or this is a X Design powered collaborative life cycle. But I can't tell the difference between these. Uh, so <laughs> it seems like the same app with different functions. So I open this up, and my 3D. Explorer goes away, so I can't actually drop content in here when I open this. So uh, it took me forever. It took me like 45 minutes to learn that I can drag this onto here and then open up. Again, I don't know where my uh, 3D space went, but then I can drag 3D space and kind of half screen it. Right. So if I run two widgets at the same time, then I'm able to access my common space. and then I can drag the part that I just made to delete and then this drop down arrow delete part and then uh, it actually doesn't update right away right so I can go back to my 3d space and uh, let's refresh this space and this is still here even though it's been deleted so it actually takes something like 10 minutes to delete or something like that so keep in mind uh, if you go to delete something it's not actually an error it just takes a while I guess uh, but it will disappear at some point <laughs> uh, that is really complicated to run two widgets at the same time to delete something it it seems very intuitive that you should just be able to delete this from this part right here and then it's gone and you can send it to some like waste basket that you can recover it from I think that's what Onshape does and I it didn't take me a week and a half or two weeks to delete something from Onshape so it goes back to this is a very complicated and overly complicated uh, user interface and uh, it's taken me a long time to do very simple things uh, due to the complexity and it seems like it's so complicated even the support people had to go several layers deep before I actually got an answer on how to delete something. Um, so let's go through another part here. You know, when you sign on for cloud-based software, the advantage is you can run it from any device, anywhere, and not have to have local installs, right? I mean, you go to Onshape's website and they sell you on it by saying you don't have to have huge local installs. Uh, you can just log into a browser and it's lightweight and you don't have to have powerful hardware and it's great. Uh, so when I go to, and I'm in Linux right now, if I go to some of my roles, right, so I've got um, Mechanical and Shape Designer, which is CATIA powered, and the modeling um, environment kind of defaults to this part design right here. And if I try to access CATIA on the cloud, you'll see that this thing loading, loading, and it takes a second, but we're going to get a little menu that comes up here. There it is. So we need to download and install software locally to run CATIA part design. This is an MSI file. That means I am limited to Windows. I think you would call this a rich native client. And the install files are about 12 gigabytes. 12 gigabytes is not that different from the size that it takes to install SolidWorks. So you're installing something the size of SolidWorks on your computer to run something on the cloud, which severely seems to impact the benefits of running something on the cloud in the first place. So from that perspective, it seems like if I'm going to locally install CATIA, which is probably about the same size of install, I can at least 
beef up my hardware, like my processor and my graphics, to get great graphics, faster speeds. And that's one of the benefits of running something local, is you can <coughs> tweak the performance of your system because you control the graphics and processing. On the cloud, you have no control of that, but you still have these massive installs. It's, it, it, it is giving me the impression that the Katia side of 3D experience has all of the drawbacks, or at least most of the drawbacks of having local installs with most of the drawbacks, if not all of the drawbacks, of working on the cloud. So I, I don't know if uh, I, I can really honestly say that Katia on the cloud is solving anything uh, just yet, because I can't run this on Linux. I can run xDesign on Linux, um, which is over here. And so if I open up xDesign, I, I think I accidentally opened Audacity there. <laughs> Um, if I open xDesign on Linux, I can tell you about uh, some of the modeling issues that I've had. If you want to edit sound, I recommend Audacity, but that's not what this video is about. Um, let's create a new component. Oh, and I've almost forgot to run you through opening existing components. You know what, let's open an existing component. We're going to close this. You can see here I'm half screened. Um, and, and, and I found this really interesting. So if I open xDesign to try to open an existing component here. Import file is like importing from SolidWorks, right? If I click this, it doesn't actually look internally. Um, if I go to, you know, common space, uh, it's looking for like a solid part, Katia, SolidWorks, 3D XML, right? So it's not the stuff that I've made in xDesign. So import file doesn't open a file that you've made in xDesign already. And there's not really an option to open a file that you've made in xDesign here. Uh, so it goes back to dragging and dropping. So if I click on the compass, I guess I have to open up uh, 3D space. And yeah, so that didn't half screen. <laughs> it is uh, almost it is just so difficult to get this arranged where I can just intuitively open a part that I've made just like it's complicated to delete a part. I haven't found a better way of doing this. So what I do, uh, 3D Creator, and I, if I actually do it from here, notice nothing happens when I click X Design. If I click X Shape, X Shape comes up. And I'm not sure what the disconnect is that I can open up X shape, which I have no interest in. But X design is totally non-responsive. And apparently there's an issue there. Don't know what that's all about. So that's kind of another built-in problem that I'm seeing where I can't open X design. Um, So how I do this, um, how I fix this is, I, I guess now I can um, half screen 3D space. Like two seconds ago, it wouldn't half screen. So somehow I got this half screen. I have no idea how that worked. Um, but now I can drag and drop a component that I've been working on. Um, Again, this is quite difficult, uh, but I, I've been modeling a returning boomerang. No idea if this will actually return, but I've done the foils the, the way that boomerangs should have them. And uh, this surface gave me a hard time, right? So I asked this uh, technical representative how to do this surface, and on the initial call, they didn't know. They tried a few different ways and, uh, and couldn't tell me. I'm actually going to do a save as so I don't mess up the surface.
and I actually have had to make a compromise on this. It's the only way that I've actually figured out how to do it. Um, so I'll go through the difficulty that I've had in doing this. If I close um, or delete this loft, you can see I've got sketch 17 here, which is simply a few arcs. Sketch 18 here, which is a guide curve. Sketch 19, which is this curve, right? Shouldn't be that hard. And so if I uh, go to surfaces, which this right now is in a surface state, it's not done. And I go with loft surface. And we start lofting uh, from sketch 19. And yeah, that looks okay. And then we'll loft to arc one. I, and I'm already getting an error, right? And I think I selected the wrong sketch. So we're gonna go to sketch 17. And that's our surface so far. Now let's go to adding a guide curve. And that would be sketch 18, and I get an error. Right? I can't do this with sketch 18. And so I have to investigate maybe um, changing the coupling. And that's not following the guide curve if I just do ratio. If I do tangency, same thing, curvature, I, that won't work. So I'm just going to stick with vertices because I set this up to uh, do a loft between the same number, number of elements to the same number of elements. And maybe if I say tangent, we're still not following the guide curve, no propagation. I can't even. <laughs> Uh, I don't even know, you know, what I'm doing here that wouldn't make this work because uh, this should be working. Um, if I try to add in my guide curve as a spline curve, that looks better, but again, we're not following this guide curve. It seems like it's just. and I get an error if I do this, right? Geometric conditions. Um, so I'm a little bit confused why this isn't working because this I've done this in Onshape, I've done this in SolidWorks, I've done this in FreeCAD, but XDesign doesn't seem to be able to do this. So again, I'm, I've, I've taken 20 minutes to uh, just sit here and complain about what's going on. I'm sure that some of this is my fault. Maybe I'm not using you know, the right browser or the right graphics card. And now that I bring up graphics card, it's probably worth mentioning that 3D Experience wants its own graphics card driver, right? It has its own prescribed graphics card driver. And that graphics card driver is different than the recommended one for this computer for SolidWorks. So I have two different graphics cards drivers if I want to run 3D Experience versus SolidWorks. I don't have this sort of conflict with Onshape, but for the, the products to be incompatible with each other present, presents a very difficult situation if you're a supplier and you have customers that are running 3D Experience and SolidWorks and Katia and ProE and, and all that. Um, and it would have been really nice if they would have you know, worked out the graphics card drivers issues. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, these are some of the difficulties that I've been having with uh, X-Design. Uh, I'll keep you updated because uh, maybe support is really going to pull through and we're going to get some of these things solved, but it seems like we are based on a very complicated interface. Um, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.